with the recent official reveal of the Lego Ninjago movie sets, we now have official pictures of a ton of really, really great sets. However, which sets stand out from the rest? Hey guys, it's Master here, and today we're going to be ranking the Lego Ninjago movie sets. Now before we get into the list here, we want to say right off the bat that this list is not going to include the collectible minifigure series or the junior set, Shark Attack. The reason Shark Attack is not being included here is because Shark Attack is overly simplified compared to a regular system set since it is a part of the Juniors line. And the collectible minifigure series isn't being included because we don't really consider that a set since it really is just minifigures. And with that out of the way, let's go ahead and get started with the list. The Manta Ray Bomber is a well-designed set and it pulls off the Manta Ray look it's going for very well, however something about it is just boring to us. Maybe it's the fact that the color seems just kind of bland really with just some grey and some white and then a little bit of yellow highlights in there, or maybe it's just the fact that it looks awkward, but the set just seems boring to me. Now although there are some cool features such as those built-in flick fire missiles with the cool trigger mechanism, as well as that a removable boat on the back, it just still comes off as boring. There isn't a lot that appeals to me from this set, and it's one of the few sets in this wave that really I just don't care about. The Flying Jelly Sub has a lot of the same flaws that the Manta Ray Bomber has. It still has that relatively boring design along with the color scheme which really isn't that appealing to me. However, I think the design is a lot cooler on this one. The whole jellyfish design just works way better here. The legs are very poseable which are cool. I like the way they have those chains coming out to sort of represent the sort of like leg things on an actual jellyfish. And the whole thing just looks cooler to me. In addition, the set comes with that little boat on the side which is actually a pretty nice small build that makes this set a lot more appealing to me because I like to have that little boat in uh, Ninjago City or any sort of like custom mock you guys have. It'd be cool to have that as a part of it. The set has some decent minifigures in the form of Jay and of course the shark of villains along with the civilian, but the set itself is just kind of lacking, being kind of boring and not really all that many great features. Spinjitsu training is pretty good, however, what really holds it down is the fact that it is, of course, the smallest set. Now, for what it is, it has a lot of cool stuff. The main structure with the two removable weapons is pretty nice, along with the scroll in the middle, which is pretty cool to see. There's a bunch of little training dummies and such, like, obstacles that you can battle, and there's a bunch of extra weapons all around. The set's pretty good for what it is. The minifigure selection's nice, but the fact is, is that it's just a small set of the wave, and that's what really hinders it. Ninjago City Chase is probably the most diverse set out of the whole line featuring a police car of some sort, a whole sort of selling booth for food outside, as well as a whole sort of light post build. And it actually looks okay, however, what really holds it down for me is actually those builds. The minifigures are great. Five minifigures for $20 is really, really good, even though the minifigures aren't the best in the world. The exclusive uh, Lloyd and Nia are pretty nice to get, but the builds are just kind of lackluster to me. The sort of uh, food booth is meh. There's some cool aspects to it, but I don't really like it that much. The design of the police car is just too weird for me personally. Master Falls is actually one of the coolest sets to come out of this line in my opinion, however it's constantly overlooked due to the fact that the bigger sets are just so great. However, I think this set's actually really cool. There's a lot of cool features such as the T-bars actually on the sides being able to connect to minifigures so you can sort of leap across using that which is pretty cool and adds different dynamics to battles that you can have. The fact that you can battle on the bridge easily is pretty cool and that looming cage over there is also really nice because it just adds that extra dynamic to the set and that little extra bit of danger which really makes it cool. The set also has a really cool design to me. I love the way the bridge works here. I think it looks really cool as well as the water details with the pointing rocks on the bottom. The little skeleton in the corner also is a little bit cool because it adds once again that dynamic saying that you know someone's been here before and it didn't work out so well adding a little bit of danger there's also that secret cave in the background which adds a little bit more playability and just overall the set's really cool and it's constantly overlooked just because of you know the fact that it is kind of small and that those bigger sets just really overshadow it
Neo's Water Shredder may be the smallest of the ninjas mechs, however I still think the set is really cool. The Water Shredder has a really cool design, being almost spider-like with the four legs, and the set has a lot of cool features such as that stud shooter in the middle, the 360 degree rotating cockpit, and of course just the whole sort of mech itself. It's also cool to mention that the fact is that this is actually Nia's first standalone set where she's like the main feature draw here and that the only thing that like is really mainly going to get you to buy the set is actually Nia and her vehicle which is cool to see and the set just works really well for me. The design is really what makes me like it. It's just a really cool design and a really unique mech. The Garma Mechman is easily the best villain set to come out of the LEGO Ninjago movie line in our opinion. However, it's not the greatest set because it feels a little bit less well designed to us than some of the other mechs, particularly that midsection. The midsection just feels kind of poorly together because the way they've kind of put it together with those, just, you know, sort of like pins there and all that stuff, it doesn't look as great to me, even though I can tell the look they're trying to convey is a, so, a kind of like a mechanical look there, it just doesn't look that great to me. The ultimate weapon is a good addition, however, I feel they should have given this mech a regular weapon as well, because it feels kind of silly to see the giant mech holding this super small laser pointer weapon, even though it is super powerful, it just feels kind of lazy. The lack of knee articulation is also kind of disappointing however this mech still has good stuff the mech is of course really cool to me and although it's not quite as well designed as some of the other mechs that doesn't make it a badly designed set the mech is still really well designed has a lot of cool features I, I like the shark spring loaded shooter it's kind of funny and a good play on the fact that this is a shark mech and the use of the aquarium as well as the propellers on the cabs are nice and there's just some nice additions and nice little details on the set The Ice Tank has one of those designs that you're either going to love it or you're going to hate it, and in our case, we really, really like it. I think the Ice Tank is one of the coolest looking sets to come out of the LEGO Ninjago movie. The giant cannon on the side looks really good to me, although it is kind of ridiculous that it's kind of just sticking out like that. I think it works in this case. I like the whole design. It's kind of like the whole pyramid sort of thing going on here, and I think it looks really cool. The only things that I don't really like about the set is that there's some red highlights on it, and for the most part, they work, but that little centerpiece just it doesn't work for me there. It's just a little bit too much red for me on that one particular part, and it adds just that tiny bit of asymmetricality, which I don't really like all that much. But other than that, I think the ice tank's actually really cool and has one of the coolest designs out of all of these sets, in my opinion. The Lightning Jet is very similar to the Zane's Tank, where the design is a design that you're either going to love or hate. Personally, I think the design's pretty cool, I like the uniqueness of it, I think it works well here. But what really set it apart from Zane's Tank for us was the fact that it came with that little tiny crab vehicle. It just adds a little bit more playability and balance to the set because you have an actual villain in the fight versus Zane's Tank, where the most you got for a villain was a random minifigure. Speaking of minifigures, Ed and Edna are included in the set, which is a pretty nice callback for fans of the TV show finally being able to get Chase parents, and the Lightning Jet itself is just a really cool vehicle to me, and a really cool set. The Green Ninja Mech Dragon is one of the coolest sets from this wave. There's a ton of sand green on it, which is going to be really good for a ton of different people who want to get that color scheme, and the set itself is really cool. It's got a bunch of cool features such as the whipping tail and the waist articulation, as well as those built-in stud shooters. The mechanical look actually works out really well with those pop-out thrusters, and the only thing I don't really like is that the head isn't brick-built. Now, it is mostly brick built with it just being kind of small segments that aren't, but I think it would have been cooler if they really got the whole brick built section going on there. However, I still think the set's really cool and it's really solid, and it's a whole lot better than I was expecting it to be when we initially got the pictures of it. The Fire Mech is another mech that is just really, really cool. It has one of those designs that are just completely unique and really unseen for LEGO mechs up until now, and it works out really, really well. The only 
possibly bad thing about this is that it probably has no knee articulation, which is really gonna kind of kill some of the posability. However, that's not gonna stop the set from looking really cool on display and still being really playable. There's a lot of good play features such as those built-in shoulder blasters and the spinning flames. It just has a lot of cool stuff to it. And the only things I really don't like about this mech is the possibility of the no knee articulation, which at this point is basically confirmed. The Temple of the Ultimate Ultimate Weapon is one of the coolest sets to come out of the LEGO Ninjago movie line in our opinion, and a lot of it has to do with the fact that it is a structure set. There aren't too many structure sets, and when they nail one like this, it just comes out really well and it's really nice. And this is one of those cases where they really nailed the structure building and the building just came out really well. It has a lot of nice play features in the back such as that dropping rock along with the cage and some of the secret dungeons. The two little guardian lion things are pretty cool and they look like nice builds and it'll, it'll be interesting to see how they add to the appearance of the temple itself. And the only thing that I don't really like about this temple is the fact that it's called the temple of the ultimate ultimate weapon and it doesn't come with the ultimate weapon. Like come on Lego what's up with that? The Destiny's Bounty is a set that I really don't have to explain why it's so high up on the list. The set is just amazing. It has so many cool design features such as the two dragon heads on the front, the way it's built just all together. There's a lot of cool small details such as Wu's bedroom and that little picture of the ninja which is a callback to the earlier ninja or the earlier Ninjago as well as some of the other rooms. There's just so many cool things about it. I love the sails, how they have that dragon pattern going there, so as if you were to have them connected, it would form a dragon. There's just so many cool features. The set's just so great. The only thing that like I possibly don't like, it, it really depends on how it plays out in the movie for me personally, is that the set does not have the flying feature like the previous Destiny's Bounties. However, that doesn't seem to matter too much to me. It's going to depend how it plays out in the movie, because if it's kind of just boring in the movie it doesn't really do much then I'd rather have the flying feature but it's gonna it's gonna depend on the movie well you all saw this coming at number one we have Ninjago City this set I really don't need to explain why it's number one this set is just absolutely amazing there's so many great features in it it's just such a well-built set the modular building style works really well for me, although personally, if I had the choice, I would prefer a more traditional city layout. However, I still think the modular setting is fine, plus it is actually uh, compatible with other modular buildings. So if you have a modular building, you actually can't connect this with your, other, with your other modular buildings, which is pretty cool and has a little bit of extra playability and displayability to this set which is nice. The minifigure selection is of course great with so many just different minifigures, there's just a bunch of diversity along with some exclusive figures. There's so many references to past LEGO themes and easter eggs in this set and everything just works with this set. It's just one of those sets that it just works so well and we don't even need to start on that price per part ratio. And that was our ranking of the LEGO Ninjago movie sets. Feel free to leave a comment ranking the LEGO Ninjago movie sets in your own list, and feel free to like the video if you did. Also feel free to check out some of our other videos similar to this one, such as our other top 10s or analysis videos which will go into further depth explaining the sets and their features. And that is it for this video ranking the sets, thank you guys for watching, and until next time, I'll see you guys later.